Hi, this is Hand Stamp by Cheryl in Indianapolis, Indiana, giving a quick tutorial on the different kinds of stamps that Stampin' Up! offers, in addition to how to get a good crisp image when stamping. So we have photopolymer, wood, and cling stamps. So I'm gonna show you the difference between them. Photopolymer have no assembly required. You will need a clear block, and in the catalog, it will let you know what are the recommended sizes. It says an A, a B, and a D. Now, if you're just getting started, a D is the most commonly used size. So we're going to use that one for this shark image here. And this is actually a two-step stamp noted here. And for that, it means you're layering basically images on top of each other. So I'm gonna put the other image on another D block. Okay, next is the cling stamps. And cling, there is assembly required. They are red rubber stamps. And I've already put this one together. I'll do a different video on that. But the cling adhesive is such that it will stick to the back of the stamp case. And so I like to use my pick tool to actually help lift it up off of the stamp case because it is very sticky. And then I'm gonna put this one on an e-block. E-block's a little bit bigger but it's great because then when you turn it over, you can see where you're stamping, okay? And then lastly are the wood mount stamps, which I think are being phased out, are only available in the background stamps, okay? So let's go ahead and get started. First, we're gonna start with photopolymer, and photopolymer are such that you're gonna need a foam mat underneath. Stampin' Up! sells this Stampin' Pierce mat, which you can use for paper piercing, but you can also use underneath your stamping. You'll also want a scrap piece of paper behind just in case you need to stamp off, you're not getting your mat all icky. So I'm gonna just quickly ink this one up and put some pressure here to make sure. I like to let it hold, hold it there for a second, okay? And remember, this is a two-step stamp. So now we're gonna add the second layer. And this is going to be with Smoky Slate. You're gonna to wanna to tap gently. You're not gonna to wanna to rock or roll. Otherwise, you'll get ink all around like the edges of the block, okay? Then I like to look at it to make sure it looks good. You can also practice on your grid paper in case you wanna do that first, okay? So now that I've got it inked up, I'm going to line it up. And you can see on the clear block, Okay, and again, I'm just gonna go straight up and down, not rocking and rolling. Hold it there for a couple of seconds just to let the ink sink in. And I'm gonna pull it up straight, and there is your image. Okay, now with cling, you do not need the foam block underneath, okay? So we are going to be using this image here and another piece of white paper. I'm gonna use some Knight of Navy ink and when you stamp it up, you see how this image is a little bit bigger, so you can go sort of back and forth. Some people like to stamp upside down like that. That's fine, as long as you look at it to make sure that you've got full coverage. I can see right here that I need more ink in the middle, so I'm gonna do that before I stamp, otherwise I'm gonna have to do a second time. <laughs> okay, and then again, push down, up and down, hold it there for a little bit, and then pull it back up. And if you're ever not happy with the image, you can see here I missed a little bit, you can use a marker to touch it up, or remember there's always two sides, so you could flip it over and try it again. You might wanna give some pressure in the middle where, since, since this is a bigger stamp, sometimes the middle can give you a little bit of issue. Much better. Thanks for watching and happy crafting. And using a background stamp, I suggest taking your ink pad and inking it up upside down like this. I also think the best way to get perfect placement with your cardstock would be to leave the stamp upside down like this and then placing the cardstock here. Okay, and then pulling your grid paper over to apply pressure and rub it like this. And then you can see I did it here and I didn't get a good image, so I re-inked my ink pad. 
Hopefully this one turned out better. It did. Okay. Then when it comes to cleaning your stamps, there are a couple different ways to do that. But I recommend the chamois, which is water-based, and it's very easy to just clean stamps like that. So thanks for watching. Happy crafting.